when one contemplates uh, a situation where we are failing to train men for the ministry, one shudders at the thought. The story of the church is always the story of great Christian leaders, but let me add great preachers. It's individuals that have been trained to the highest possible levels. They can open that book and declare the mind of God to the people. Where he then moves and he saves. If that doesn't happen, um, a dark day awaits us. 2,000 kilometers north of South Africa lies the peaceful landlocked nation of Zambia. It is a country full of beauty and wonder, a place that once captivated the heart of the famous missionary, David Livingston. We have a saying in Zambia that Zambia is the real Africa. It's the only land next to Eden in the world. <laughs> we love it. A country of 72 tribes with about 50 or more dialects, and yet we live like one family. It's, it's uncomparable to any other country. We may not be up there economically or technologically, but we are unmatched relationally. And that in itself, the Lord uses it to open doors for the gospel to go around the country. The spiritual climate in Zambia is on one hand encouraging, but on the other, um, quite discouraging. Eh? Let me explain. On the encouraging side is the fact that we are still largely dealing with the first generation of indigenous leaders for the Zambian Evangelical Church. And so we, we haven't quite lost the gospel altogether. And this is now the negative that I, I have to speak about. By the end of the 20th century, there was quite a bit of what I would call the traditional element. We, we are the Tonga Church or the Bemba Church or the Lozi Church. And because of that, when the sort of Pentecostal charismatic movement came in, it found a place where doctrinal emphasis was no longer the case. It was like an open field that was easy to take over. Much of what goes for Christianity in Zambia is, is not biblical. For example, there's a teaching, sowing the seed. If you want to prosper, you have to plant a seed on fertile ground, and this man of God is the fertile ground. So that seed is actually monetary. The impact of the prosperity gospel is ravaging the people, and many people are taken apart by these teachings because they don't know what is the true gospel. Instead of the gospel coming in and building people that are hardworking and faithful and honest, we are having a situation where we have basically magicians and magicians taking over the stage and influencing people to just make you bra bra stuff and everybody quickly becomes rich. It's all going against the teaching of scripture. We need to plant churches because at the end of the day, in any town or city, or even in the rural parts of the country, uh, what you need is a lampstand, a place where light continues to emanate. What happens then is that people can see what a true church, true preaching, true discipleship looks like. We then need to develop pastoral training or simply 
church leadership training venues, places where you can deliberately train preachers who then get sent out. Amen. Amen. Seeking to train preachers, four ministerial colleges were established throughout the country. The Lusaka Ministerial College in Lusaka, the Copper Belt Ministerial College in Indola, the Mongu Ministerial College in Mongu, and Covenant College Zambia, located in Patauke. While all four colleges now work together, they didn't start that way. Reaching the capital city of Lusaka is the Lusaka Ministerial College. When we hear the gospel, we respond to the gospel, don't we? Because God has given us rational capacities. We are able to reason, we are able to understand what has been presented to us. The Lusaka Ministerial College did not start off as the Lusaka Ministerial College. It was firstly something that started at Kabwata Baptist Church as a, as a lay preacher's college. That was way back in 1992. Uh, two years later, three other churches based in Lusaka came together and said, well, why don't we broaden this and, and just start a college? So it was changed to Lusaka Reformed Preacher's College. And then about 2009, we had a missionary coming in from the USA who sat down with us and says, can we work together and train these pastors? And so that's how the Lusaka Ministerial College was born. At the same time that Lusaka Ministerial College was being shaped, 300 kilometers to the north in the town of Indola, the Copper Belt Ministerial College was also being established. At that time, I'd known that he had already booked a ticket, going to the USA to go and do further studies. I said, you need to be honest. In January, the guy left without even saying bye to the church properly, and I don't think he'll come back. When I thought through how many men I know who went to Bible colleges, they go to the USA, to the UK, to see the lights and the beauty and everything. The temptation is so high. I never thought to come back and just say, this is it. What's the answer to this? We can still give people the best education, best content, good lecturers here in Zambia. If genuinely they're interested in being trained, they'll come. Once the Copper Belt and Lusaka Ministerial Colleges started working together, it didn't take long for another to join. Before long, we got an SOS call from Mongo saying, we need something like this here. 600 kilometers to the west of Lusaka, in the western province of Zambia, lies the city of Mongu. The center of a rural district inhabited by the Lozi people, Mongu is located on the edge of the vast Zambezi floodplain a place where God's artistic beauty can't be denied. Mongu Ministerial College started as pastor's training college, and it was largely an idea of a couple from the United States of America. So in God's providence, so in 2013, the college uh, started uh, in partnership with Kawata Baptist, Lusaka Baptist Church, and also eventually Heart Cry. So that's the history of the Mongo Mystery College. Hallelujah. Four hundred kilometers to the east of Lusaka resides the city of Patauke, home to Covenant College Zambia Trust. What I want to do this morning, I want us to go and look at the Chikobode for traditional African view of life. Just a short, short. Though the colleges were originally established to train preachers from within their own churches, it soon became apparent that there was a bigger need. The gospel is now being shared with preachers from other backgrounds. 
We advertise ourselves as a school that uh, teaches from the reformed perspective. And uh, I don't think most of the students that we do accept fully understand what that means. We have a few uh, Baptist students, but the majority of our students, I would say probably 80, 85% of our students are coming from Pentecostal charismatic denominations. How far is your belief in the Lord Jesus Christ? We do assess before we can enroll them. And uh, during that interaction, we actually come to discover that uh, some of them uh, are not even saved. Jesus for you. Uh, the common thing is that as long as uh, one goes to church, uh, they are committed, you know, they know how to sing. For them, that person qualifies, you know, to be a church leader. Those who were persecuting him should have their sins forgiven. But they come to realize that uh, although they have been uh, saving into leadership, they are actually not saved. Men of different ages come to learn. Uh, they range from 22 years old all the way to 66 up to 81 years old. In 1960, we were just doing and mixing traditional and religion. We didn't know. But the time I came here to take up a course, this pastoral course, is when I came to learn that uh, Jesus is the center of everything. Words mean different things. For instance, in America and places like that, the Pentecostal charismatic movement, the preachers and teachers who are there have actually gone through Bible college. And consequently, they have rejected the truth to go into the direction of the prosperity gospel cross over into Africa, a lot of the individuals who are propagating the prosperity gospel are individuals who've not had the opportunity of the grounding of the gospel itself. So they're not people that have rejected something. They're just individuals who have adopted a sort of African traditional religion with a form of Christianity. What you now have is really the African witch doctor replaced by a preacher. When that someone is a, uh, is a Christian, but at the same time, they are also involved with witchcraft. Because for you to assume to the position of a leader, you must have charms. So I find the, most of these pastors have charms behind their pulpits, you know, charms everywhere. You will not find anyone who says he is not a Christian. They believe that they are Christian simply because they attend a church. And a predominant church here is the New Apostolic Church, which is a church that has mixed they are traditional beliefs with a sort of some Christianity. So when they hear the, the true gospel, they resist. The effects of the false gospel have spread far and taken root in the African culture. It's to the point that national governments are getting involved. And what's happening in this country is that the new Pentecostals, the Charismatics, anyone just jumps up in the morning, gets a briefcase, claims himself to the prophet, and off they go. But slowly, because of the spiritual abuse that's going on in the churches, the government will soon start demanding that you have some theological training. So some are finding that to be a reason to come. But God is using the ministerial colleges to reach those spreading the false news. We encourage these men when they come to college, number one, not to leave their churches. So when they go back, they will be able preachers, uh, good teachers and disciples of Jesus Christ. Uh, and people begin to appreciate in their churches. If we can gather these men who are teaching these things, if they can come, we introduce them to the true gospel. And with the gospel making its positive effect, will then begin to see its positive result.
you know, then and uh, idolized by his congregation. And then he comes to our college and by the end of the first year, uh, God has be begun speaking to him and reshaping his doctrinal beliefs and ministerial convictions and practices. And sometimes half the congregation rise up against him and says, we don't need you as our pastor, or you have to go back to the way you used to preach, or else we are leaving. And they leave, and, and this is someone's livelihood. Our lecturers are not just those who once pastored, but are by and large still pastoring. So you have pastors who are training pastors. And consequently, it's the Timothys being trained by the Pauls. You're still in the ministry. You still are connected to your church. And you come here to meet other men. But also you're being taught by men who are in the ministry themselves. When you come into this ministerial college, uh, the focus is not the cream of society or the cream of the church or the most intelligent. The focus is the men with the heart. The absence of personal evidence has led to a lot of compromise in the church. Give them the tools, educate them in the, tools, educate them in the things of the Lord, and they will take the gospel to fellow average men and women who are equally desiring to know God and they will run with the baton of the faith and take it to the others. It's just teaching faithful men God's word. But we want to go and see what is underneath. Our standard is actually international standard. Along with their local teachers, the ministerial colleges are blessed by willing preachers who travel internationally to teach at the colleges. Uh, likewise, we can see other genres will influence how we read the letter and how we understand the book. Right now, we are, I would say, operating truly like always at the grace of God. We have lecturers, local one, and those who are coming from outside. Much like the book of Job, when you see the book of Job, Job cries out, I I'm innocent. Job doesn't mean he's never sinned. Like the lecturers coming from outside the country, they are local churches. See this as a gift to train men here. The bringing in of uh, lecturers from outside, that enables our students to realize when they listen to international lecturers and then find that the Zambians are at that same uh, level. future, my hope is in the churches that are being established because that's where lives are being spoken to week by week. And especially as Africa becomes a major missionary force into the rest of the world, want to see the export going out of Africa being really Bible-based because that then becomes the hope for the world until the Lord returns. We are hoping that as we train these men for ministry, that the Lord will ignite something that will turn them into true champions of the faith. <laughs>